Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I want to show you guys how to create 3D text effects inside of DaVinci Resolve 15. So if you want to do this, the element you're going to need from the effects library is called Text Plus. You can get that by being in the Edit tab, going up to the top left where it says Effects Library, opening that up. Then you go to Toolbox, Titles, and then Text Plus, and drop this into your timeline. So in order to have this title show properly with such a bright background image, we probably want to add in some drop shadow. If we click on the text itself, we can go over to the fourth tab under template, which is called shading. And on select element three, we're going to have black shadow as a default we can enable here. So by doing that, we get some drop shadow added onto this text. And one of the cool things about this is that when you add in some 3D movements, the shadow will actually be reflected in those movements as well. So it will basically follow the text characters around. Next, we want to go over one tab under template to transform. And we'll have some settings here, uh, some of which are fine for doing both 2D and 3D effects, but rotation and shear are the ones that are most relevant to us here because that's how we get those 3D looks. So rotation is going to be spinning the text around on a certain axis or multiple axes at once. So if we do an X rotation, it'll look something like this where adding X rotation makes it tilt backwards and it will go all the way around in a loop. You can see you can go above 360 degrees, in which case it'll just keep repeating. And if we go backwards, it's going to tilt forwards towards the camera. With Y rotation, it's instead turning left and right. If we put it at about 90 degrees, you can see it's almost impossible to see uh, because the text characters are now in 3D facing away from the camera. And as it gets back to 0, 180 degrees or some increment of that, it's going to be facing the camera once again. And we can have this rotate as many times as we want. In this case, Z rotation is going to be tilting to the left or tilting to the right. And you can see how all of these characters are rotating around anchor point, which is actually set at the bottom of the character by default. Adding shear to X and Y is going to slant each character outside of its original shape. So if I shear to the left here, which is actually going to make a tilt right in the camera because it's reversed, like mirroring back to us, it's going to slant almost italicized wise uh, to the right if we add right shear it's going to tilt to the left and y shear is very similar it will also distort the text characters out of shape in a similar fashion so in addition to rotation and shear we can also change size and spacing to get different looking effects in our video clip now whenever we want to make an animation we should have values set at one point with a keyframe which we can check a diamond over here on the right for any of these attributes. And then we find a new spot in the timeline and add a new keyframe. Uh, once we've enabled one keyframe though, if we change it anywhere else in the timeline, new keyframes will automatically be created. So here I'm going to add some keyframes for shear and rotation. And uh, let's say size as well, all at the first frame of this text animation. And now I'm going to go a few seconds in and we will change the values here. So we'll do Y rotation to make it spin around. And uh, maybe we just set this to a number like 1440, or in other words, four times 360 or four full rotations from the start to where we currently are in the timeline. So we can also increase the size here, but what you'll notice is that by increasing the size with the transform options, that the characters aren't going to be spaced out any more than they were at the beginning. So if we set it to something like 1.5, 1.5, what you're going to notice is that the characters are very closely spaced together. So we'll also want to increase character spacing here at the very least. Um, something like 1.1 is okay. And make sure you set that as a keyframe. And also go back to the start so that I can modify that keyframe to be spacing 1.0. And now over the course of the time, um, the... Animation should have the text getting bigger, the character spacing getting wider, but in addition to that, the 3D component of the Y rotation. Now we can play this back in the preview window, uh, but sometimes, depending on how complicated your animation is, it may take a while to render before you actually export it. In this case, it actually um, is playing back pretty well, so that's about what we have there. Pretty cool. 
Now, it's worth mentioning that you can create your own very unique effects because almost every attribute inside of DaVinci Resolve text actually allows you to set one of these keyframes here. So you can go back over to some of the other tabs under template and change some of the elements over time as your clip of animation progresses. Now, one more thing I do want to mention over in the effects library titles, you might notice that there's something called fusion titles now, and a lot of these are labeled with 3D. So in effect, there are a lot of default effects you can also play around with um, and change to your liking. You just need to drop them into the timeline and then you just need to customize it to how you want it to show up in your video. But just by adding it in like that, you can get some pretty cool effects out of the box as well. Now, once again, it's gonna take a little longer to render in the timeline, depending on your computer, but you can kind of click around to get an idea of how it will look in the final render in any case. So that's gonna be it for 3D text effects inside of DaVinci Resolve for this video. I've been Chris, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in my future video content.